Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. You know, I feel like I've missed you guys. Uh, it's been almost two weeks since I did a live, and uh, the reality is I've I've been busy. I've been traveling quite a bit. Uh, I've been in quite a few conferences, and you know, that's something that I have taken on as something that my 2021 is going to bring me is um, higher level of education. Uh, a lot of you know my my story. I just a high school graduate. I've got a PhD, which is a public high school diploma, uh, but I've managed to work my way up and do uh, some some development stuff. But I've learned that over time, if I'm not investing in myself, nobody is, right? I mean, I, as a self-employed individual, if I'm not going out and getting more education and learning more things, then I'm not able to see how I can better myself. You know, one of the things about being an entrepreneur is that I don't get the ability to learn from other people by getting into a bigger organization, seeing how they do things, watching what goes on, changing my strategy, coming up with the best thing, watching how Fortune 500 companies do it, watching how other builder and developers do it. Because when I show up on the scene, they kind of close up their doors and say, well, you know, we really don't want you to see what's going on. We want to, you know, this is kind of our proprietary thing. So it's been difficult for me. But what I've realized lately is that I can invest in myself, right? And it's and I know that it's a little late, right? Old dog, new tricks, 47 years old, but I can figure this out. And the reality is at the end of the day, I've taken the thought process and the diligence of investing in myself to a new level in that I'm really pushing hard with who I am, understanding what makes me tick, understanding what makes me feel, feel uh, fulfilled and successful, so that I can then know what excites me and push toward those things in my life, not shy away from things that have caused me trauma or damage or whatever, and not be afraid of things, but also embrace the change that needs to happen in my life. You know, a lot of times we're all worried about what do we invest in this market? How can we get the greatest ROI? What are we going to do to make sure that we have a great retirement and, and, a, and a savings and all of that? And I'm sitting here figuring it out. It's investing in yourself. It's capitalizing on the gifts that God gave you and moving those forward and understanding that you can do amazing things when you're operating in what you love the most, right? I love certain things about my business and I hate certain things about my business. And I've always used the thought process and I've always had the, the saying that I, I hire my weaknesses and I think I've done pretty good at that. But what about strengthening my strengths? What have I done to really educate and sharpen my strengths and really dig into what I know to be true about who I am? What have I invested in me that I really like that I can then elevate that game to the point that I know that I'm taking it to the next level? I know that I'm getting the best out of me, the highest performance out of me that I possibly can. See, so often we look about how we can invest our money but we've traded time for that money. So why not invest in you that gets the greatest return out of you in that time that then would add to the largest return on investment? And a lot of times those aren't measured in dollars and cents. Satisfaction is not something you can measure in dollars and cents. It's not something that you can come at and go, you know what? I love what I'm doing here and I'm feeling very satisfied with what I'm doing here. And that's what makes me happy, right? A lot of times there's more to it than that. A lot of times there's other things that you need to be involved with and dealing with in that, that you can do so that you can have that quality of life, right? And how often is it that you're sitting there looking for the quality of life that money can't buy when you're at the end of life's road? We don't hear, we always make the joke that we don't hear anybody at the graveyard saying, hey, I wish I'd have spent more time at the office, right? But we also don't hear anybody uh, that's looking that ever says, I wish I wouldn't have been taken that class. I wish I wouldn't have invested in myself. I should have spent that money on something else, a Ferrari, whatever. And one of the things that I've learned in the last couple of months is that my ability to add value to myself is exponential. Because as I begin that self-education process, I'm learning how much I don't know, but it's also showing me what I, else I need to learn. And I've seen where as I've been able to add to that and been able to push that farther forward, I'm able to see where I'm able to add more and I'm able to add more. And now I can get to that place where a certain individual calls it 10Xing, 
right? <laughs> well, I don't need to tell you who it is. His marketing brand is out there strong enough. You already know. But when you are able to add to the value that you already added to the value that you already added, you're starting to go three times and four times. And now you're starting to see things that were difficult in the beginning become rudimentary, become something that becomes second nature. And in that second nature-ness, making up new words here, in that ability to do that, you're able to come up with the thought process that I can move forward faster. I can do more of this. I can have more of this. I can be more of this. And when you're getting to that place and you're doing those things, you're seeing where you're able to actually go farther than you thought. You know, there's that saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think that that also applies to education. It applies to self-improvement. It applies to the things in our lives that we want to have happen in a positive way. So the reality is we want to see that happen. We want to see those things grow. We want to see those things in our lives change and expand. But in order to do that, we got to start with ourselves. We've got to be the person that can take on those new roles, that can push into those new areas, that can see those things grow. Because if we're not that person, then we're not going to be able to achieve those results. And I see that a lot of times what happens in business is people are the structural failure in their business. It's not the business that fails in a lot of cases. It's the people inside that aren't handling the responsibilities that come their way in the best fashion. They're not able to grow in a fashion that represents a positive dynamic in their company. A lot of times you'll find that owners are the poison in their business or they're not mature enough that they see their value as the owner and entrepreneur that they allow employees to poison their business. And instead of eradicating that poison, they deal with the limiting belief that they have to have John or Sam or Sarah in their business. And so they let that person stay. And in letting that person stay, they continue to drive division in their business. They continue to inject poison in their business. And with that, they're not investing in themselves because if they really truly did that, they would be investing in themselves and then they would see how that investment's paying off. They would see that they could invest in their employees and get that to pay off. They could see how they could take that to step two and step three and step four. You know, I've known for a long time that if I invest in myself and I invest in my employees, we're all going to elevate together. And as we raise that bar, as we, as we bring that game up, we're going to be able to do better things and create better environments in our own work, in our own home lives, and that's going to be better for everybody. I, I liken it to uh, my book club, right? I, I assign, it's not an assignment, it's an option. If you want to read these 13 books, then I will pay you. But it's an exponential thing, just like the books are. So if you read the first book, I'll pay you a dollar, and I'll double that every book. Well, if you read all 13 books, I owe you a little over five grand. And if you do that on an annual basis, guess what? You get an extra $5,000 and I get an employee that has learned 13 new things, 13 new focuses that add to our bottom line, that increase the productivity of our company, that increase the understanding of our employees. And through that, we wind up with less employee and more partner. And see, that's the goal for me. The goal for me is to bring everyone up to a level where we're functioning at a high level in our best abilities and doing things that through that are able to really, really knock it out of the park because we're satisfied, we're happy, and we're operating in an area that we're really, truly gifted at. And we've seen some of those smooth edges roughed off or some of those rough edges smoothed off. And we've seen those things be polished and we've seen those things come up a level and we've watched people get better at the things that they're awkward at and do things that they didn't like doing prior. So that when we have that opportunity to do that, we're able to do that in a way and in a fashion that allows us to elevate, to reach the goals and the desires of our life. You know, for employers that lose sight of the fact that your employees are here to trade time for money to fuel their life and to do the things that are in their pursuit of happiness, those employers lose sight of their employee altogether. But when you're constantly investing in your employee and showing your employee where you can be everything you want to be, let me help you, let me help you grow, you're able to elevate them and they in turn elevate your business. So I'm going to challenge everybody once again, what are you doing to invest in you? Because you are your greatest asset. It's not your 401k. It's not the real estate you have or don't have. It's not the apartment buildings or the office buildings that you have. It's not the car you drive. The greatest investment you have is in you. 
second greatest investment is in your family, your wife and your children, your husband and your and your spouse. Those are the things that matter, right? Those are the things that are the highest and best investment for you. Those are the things that are going to get you the greatest return. So guys, take the time to evaluate. Are you investing enough in yourself? Are you investing to the point that you're going to get the kind of returns that you want, that you're going to be able to produce the results that you're looking for? Guys, I hope you have a phenomenal weekend. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. You plan for next week and you go knock it out of the park because you can. I'll talk to you later, guys. Have a great weekend.